Jude. You might remember Nadia G from coming on our show all the fucking time or <laughs> bitch in kitchen. <laughs> Pretty much. Yo, it's you're looking great as per usual. Thank you, man, which which is is nice to hear because I've been doing a new travel show these days and I basically put on 15 pounds doing the show. I mean, Where'd what you are you going to do? On? On uh, mostly ass? yeah, m- on my ass. On my boobs. I'm pretty much every. I'm lucky. I gain weight everywhere. It's not just one spot. You so. You know what? I remember I was fucking with this broad, and I was trying to take her serious, and I saw where the weight went, and it didn't go to her booty. Like she, over, t- she put on ten pounds, and it all went to her fucking stomach. And I was uh. like, this is not gonna work. Cause <laughs> what about when I get her pregnant? You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, it's tough. Some people gain weight in like very specific weird areas. Yeah. It'll be like the side of their thighs. Yeah. All of a sudden start puffing out. I could deal with the side of the thighs. Yeah, that's all right. It's something it's something to hold on to. But yeah. there's, there's, there's definitely, it's nice to be able to gain weight everywhere. I just don't want a boxy fucking SpongeBob <laughs> bitch. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, you know, I mean, to each their own. But uh, what I, not I, to I, me. The boxy SpongeBob bitch definitely does not sound like uh, la creme de la creme. That's for N- sure. Nah, it's, it's <laughs> La poop de la shit. You, you dig what I'm saying? I just spoke another language. Oh yeah, that was that that was that was nice French. It's kind of crazy because like you've been coming on so much that I just stopped wanting to sexually harass you. Oh, that's a you know that's so cool because every time I come on the show, like all right, well we got about a an hour and fifteen minutes of sexual harassment <laughs> booked on the on the calendar. Yep. Let's do this. <laughs> I was yeah, I know. I was like, she's never gonna, gonna have sex with me, so I might as well just treat her like a human. And this is what I'm doing now. Aww, doesn't that feel nice. better? Uh, it's so nice. I'm telling you, you know, being treated like a human is. Let's is see quite that ass. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see that motherfucker. Uh, so, all right, so you 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 were doing a travel show. That's right. So I have a new show launching called Bite This with Nadia G. And we basically travel across America and eat some of the best foods across the country. But what's interesting is that we've taken that comedy concept and brought that on the road as well. So if you like Bitch and Kitchen and the kind of absurdity um, that that was in that show, you're going to find a lot of it in Bite This. We fuck with the chefs a lot. Uh, the chefs that you go see, you fuck with them? Yeah, totally. So we do our research in advance, like go take a look at their Twitter feed, see some weird shit that they tweeted in like 2012, and then bring it up with them. They get awkward. We have a few laughs. I get them to rap with me sometimes to Wait, sing. you rap? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Well, we had this one soulful song that we did uh, at the Cecil in Harlem. So this is a really great restaurant in Harlem. And uh, the chef uh, doesn't put any pepper in his dredge. So we decided to Wait, sing. hold up. What is dredge? So dredge is the flour that you kind of put the chicken in, and in this case, the guinea hen, to deep fry it. It's what okay. gives it that nice, crispy crust. Right, right, right. So we sang this one song called uh, No Pepper in the Dredge, No Pepper in the Dredge, No Pepper in the Dredgy Wedge. It was just, it was almost <laughs> like Janis Joplin was sent, <laughs> sitting across from me. After she kind of overdosed. Yeah, like, like she was almost dying. Like a corpse. Yeah, like, <laughs> that's it, that version. <laughs> a dead Janis Joplin. All right, so you said you put on 15 pounds. I you, did. You look good. I, I, are you going to keep it on? Uh, no, when I finish my last block, I got one more, I got a couple of more cities to do, and then I'm going to take care of it. There was a moment at the beginning of the trip, at the beginning of the show, where I was like, yeah, I'm going to get a personal trainer, and I'm going to work out every day, and that lasted like four days, and then I was like, fuck it. You're looking all voluptuous, though. Yeah, it's good. It's like you a 60s model. <laughs> That's, and like, yo, look, man, you try to... You want to get more black viewers, you got to get that ass bigger. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, man. Everybody, well, everybody likes uh, some dunk, huh? Yeah, some badunka dunk. Mm-hmm. Is that what you're yeah, referring that's to? That's what I'm referring to. I have you thought about just throwing up after you get done, or is that gonna <laughs> will that will that offend the chefs? <laughs> like, how realistic is bulimia for you on these eating shows? Bulimia is a tough one, you know. There's certain moments where you consider it, man, because it's like, holy crap, you've just had, like, pulled pork for breakfast, you've had a rack of ribs for lunch, you know, then you're doing another restaurant and eating mac and cheese, and you just feel so stuffed. But I cannot do it. Why? I simply cannot make myself throw up. You don't like wasting food? Is that what it is? It's, or just, you just... It's, too, it's too nasty. Like, the only time I'll force myself to throw up is when I get bed spins. If I'm too like drunk if you and drank get too yeah, much. if I drank too much and get bed spins, then I'm like I'll go and I'll be like, look, I gotta do this. But with food, ah, especially so chunky coming up, 
I guess you're right. Yeah, you gotta like chew it on the way out. Ugh. Yeah, that's no good. <laughs> See, as like a as a drug user, you just you come to terms with throwing up pretty. You got you have to because like if you do too much, if you do too many drugs, you just have to go throw up or mm-hmm. else it's gonna be a real fucking hassle. So like I don't know. To me, your caloric intake in that day, you must be putting down four or five thousand calories, easy, right? Easy, easy, yeah, yeah. Thank, yeah. Thank and, goodness I have a decent metabolism. And a you woman know? your size is what fifteen to two thousand, fifteen hundred to two thousand calories. Precisely fifteen hundred if you want to stay ripped, two thousand if you're just like whatever maintaining weight. So. Jesus Christ, dude! You yeah. can't you can't continue this lifestyle. You're gonna be fat as shit. You're telling me? I know, I know. Or throw up, chew and spit, <laughs> chew and <laughs> spit. The, the old chew and spit diet. Yeah, like they do in the. Uh, th- there was a whole TV show about that where you where where they was trying to get their girls to stop chewing and spitting. It was a. Uh, What's that shit where you walk into the room and everyone surrounds you and be like, you've been fucking up. Um, Intervention. Yeah, there was a chew and spit (laughs) intervention. Yeah, you've been fucking up. Like, you could do that. Chew and spit is hard, though, because when you're eating this food, it's so damn tasty, right? You just got to swallow. Yeah, you're like, oh, this is good, but... Man, it'll, it'll catch up with you, that's for sure. Luckily, you know, a season is what? Uh, each, you know, it's each at each given time, I'm doing 18 days on the road times three. So Why are you doing all this math on my head? I right know, now? I'm doing it. I did myself in there, too. I was 54, like, oh, is that it? <laughs> Something like 18 that. 18 times three, look at that. <laughs> oh, God, that wasn't even close, is it? We is just lost like 54 viewers, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, fuck this shit. I used to date this bulimic chick when I was poor, and I would, you know, like, you, you're you poor, you're, you're working your ass off, I got a kid, I'm, like, paying on my daughter, and then I'd go take this girl to go get, like, Jet's Pizza, and this bitch fucking throws it up afterwards. And- you noticed? Oh, she was she was shameless. She did not give a fuck. Really? She was like, like, excuse me, I'm going to go barf now. Uh." She was a black chick, the only black bulimic chick I ever met. I'm sure there's a ton of them now. But like back in the day, this was a rarity. And yeah, I would, you know, we'd be driving home. She'd like, pull over. And she'd just throw up on the side of the road. Oh, man. You know, like bulimia, there's so many problems associated with it. One of which is the teeth. They kind of get like meth looking teeth because all the acids from the stomach start eating away at your enamel. It's pretty. Nasty. <laughs> well, um, when is the show gonna start? When you, when 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 is it gonna come out? So the show airs this coming Monday, the fourteenth, fourteenth of July. On what channel? On Cooking Channel. How come, man, you don't do a show where I get to go and ride your coattails? Like, how come I can't be like <laughs> Tom Arnold, can't, and you can be Roseanne, and I'll be your Tom Arnold, and I'll ride around, and I'll get a paycheck, and I'll crack a joke now and then? Well, we actually do have correspondence, and that's exactly what they do, so maybe we can figure out a way to get Rude Jude doing a what kind of report? We got a spice guy, we got figure a Figure out a way, fire yeah. one of these motherfuckers, <laughs> and get me in. Who's the, who's the spice guy? I'm pretty good at pepper. Fucking get rid of this guy, Cayenne. Like I'm, look, I'm v- well versed in spices. Oh, absolutely. Cardamom, a cardamom. Yeah, both of them, <laughs> both of them. Car- <laughs> so you actually have correspondence where where they be like, what? They they go out on the out on the town and they be like, this is a new kind of spice. Yeah. So basically, the way it works is like if I'm doing a, a mac and cheese with the chef, and I did this awesome one with uh, w- with some some bacon wrapped jalapenos in there. It was so delicious. I'll be like, oh, and we got some jalapeno in here. Here's the spice agent with his jalapeno report, and he'll either be on a farm um, or you know at, at a spice market. With Panos, who's our meat and fish guy, he'll cover Jesus like Christ. the meat, you know. So if I'm eating at a restaurant and they grow their own beef, he'll be at that beef farm, you know, talking to the farmers and making them somewhat uncomfortable with his very short shorts and a little bit of brain hanging out. That's how we like our reports. Wait, hold with up. Brain. You, you're fucking, your guy wears some short shorts <laughs> with his nuts hanging out? A little bit, I'm yeah. not doing that, all right? <laughs> you know, well, you see, that's the thing. You gotta, if you want to be a correspondent... That's kind of like sexual harassment. That would be like me making you wear like fucking <laughs> cleavage and you, with with your fucking monkey hanging out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I know we do. We do have a little bit of reverse sexism in bitch and kitchen. I mean, my my nutritionist guy is always shirtless is and always so? greased up, and that's how he delivers his reports. 
Man, you're fucking. You got. You got it made. You got it made. <laughs> you got a casting couch for these guys. Do you, are you like, come on Pass in. Pass them around. Yeah, yeah. Make them crawl around. That's what I would do. Like if I was a chick, I'd like make them crawl around and smell my crotch. But like, oh. I know I'm fucked up, right? That's, that's what. I, but that's what I would do. Like, it's good. To, it's good revenge fantasies, you know. That's well, yeah. Actually, I was looking at. Uh, that's what I was looking at yesterday uh, with the pornography, the fucking slave porn. Oh, yeah? Man, slave porn is cool. Where the chicks were fucking, like, just dogging. Well, then the dudes were dogging the chicks, but I was watching them both. You could do it like... Yeah, a little bit of BDSM, man. That's the shit, you, you ever know? get into that? A little bit, sure. What did, like, what's the wildest shit that you did? Oh, my God. The wildest shit that I've done. Um... Or, like, what's, what's your thing? Like... <laughs> Like for instance, I'll start with the sharing. Like I tried to, All right, you I got, start. I got like the, I tried to. It didn't work, but I tried. I, I got like a, a dog collar and a dog bowl, and then I got pee pads, and then I was walking her around like a dog, and I was trying to get her to go pee on the pee pads. Oh, you go hard, I, man! Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she wasn't all the way comfortable enough to go pee on the pee pads. Right, <laughs> but but the 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 collar worked out, and yeah. the the walking around the room. I'm, I love I love being bitten. I think that's really hot. Yeah, yeah, that's some some sexy stuff. And all kinds of other stuff that I simply just, cannot divulge. You can tell me. No, I just I told you the pee pad story. I just told you the pee pad story. Well, let's just say that I, I'm not super into vanilla sex, that's for sure. You're into getting bitten? Yeah. What bit. a, I'm guessing your hair pulled? Um, a little, this, yeah, I a mean, little like hair the, pulling? A little bit. I, mean, I would say it'd be hard to find a woman that doesn't really enjoy that. Everyone likes a little bit of a... You know I what know. I would do what? while I was having sex oh, with you, doggy style? <laughs> I would braid your hair and cry. Aww. <laughs> you do like beautiful. French braids? Yeah, or? I would do a French braid in your hair while doing <laughs> doggy Sobbing. style. Sobbing. And then I would cry, yeah. Do you want to do you want to talk to some people and maybe you you always come on and, and give cooking advice and you give such sound advice. Oh, thank you. Um would you like to would you like to talk to some people perhaps and maybe you can help them out with their cooking needs? Sure, let's do it. All right, 8887423345. 8887423345. Nadia G is here and she's here to to talk to you about all things food related. Don't bring up the fact that she likes to get bitten in bed. <laughs> Or have her hair pulled. Don't, do not. Do don't not. Even think, don't even offer to bite her. You got a man right now? What's your deal? Uh. Yeah. Yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, she does. Oh, look at her go. Uh. Is your man fat or is he like regular size? I don't know. He's a regular size. But you, you're you doing all the cooking all the time, right? No, not really, man. You, when, Whenever I'm dating someone, I like someone who knows how to cook a little bit. It's so just you fun. You, right. you cook together. You know, it's some. It's not good when one person is taking on all the kitchen responsibilities. It's just kind of like it makes it a drag instead of something fun to do. So I really, I like being with people that know their way around the kitchen a little bit. I mean, you right, don't right. have to be like an executive chef, but you should be able to put a, a couple of things together. Making a good breakfast. I, I like guys who know how to make breakfast. You like know? what type of breakfast do you simple, like? Simple, simple. Just bacon, eggs. You know what I would give you for breakfast? What? Dick. Oh, I would give you God. dick breakfast. <laughs> a, a good old dick <laughs> breakfast. Yes, yes. Yeah. I remember those from the 50s. They were advertised <laughs> a lot. Ladies, get a good old dick breakfast. Wouldn't you like that? Wouldn't that be nice? No, rude. <laughs> Jude. <laughs> <laughs> Put maple syrup on it. You know what I'm saying? A sticky dick breakfast is what you say. It <laughs> uh, gets more appetizing by the minute. I know. I know. How to, <laughs> I know how to romance you, ladies. Bite this with Nadia G is premiering July 14th. Call up if you if you want if you want if you want some cooking tips from Nadia G. I just got a new spot and like I'm doing more entertaining. I don't really. I really can't cook that well. But what I've been doing is just. I go buy a gang of fancy cheeses and type shit, and then and then it makes it look like I know what I'm doing, but I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Well, listen, man, cheese plates are awesome, and uh, you know you, the, there's so many great selections of cheeses out there. But but I'm surprised, man. Cooking's so easy. How come you find it so hard? Well, I mean, you're just intimidated by the process. You know what, what it is? is? I'm gonna tell you what it is. Real talk. Real talk. Mm -hmm. I was vegetarian for 14 years. 
So I never cooked meat. And then when I started eating meat, like, I don't know what the fuck to do. Like, do you, like, buy a steak and do you run it under the water? Like, I don't know. Like, do you rinse off your steak before? You, like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Well, these these are these are simple questions, but I understand the intimidation um, when it comes to meat. If you're not used to handling it uh, with a steak, what I like to do is this simple trick: you get a steak that's one inch thick, make sure it's one inch thick, then you cook it two minutes on high on each side to get that nice crust, and then two more minutes on medium low to cook it just a, to a perfect medium. You, then you put a bit of foil paper on top, you get it off the heat. Okay. And let it sit there for 10 minutes. How easy is that? What Two I minutes put on, on high. Oh, man, I, I could give Salt you a and great... pepper. Salt and pepper. And then you can make a little balsamic reduction on the side. It sounds fancy, but it's actually real easy. It's uh, equal parts maple syrup and balsamic vinegar. You just cook that down for five, seven minutes, and it, it becomes nice and nice and thick and sweet and tangy, and you just drizzle that shit all over your steak. Man. You'd I'm... impress a girl with that. You know what I impress them with? Dick breakfast. They're right, really right. into that shit. But. <laughs> well, after the sticky dick breakfast, yeah. if you need a few more nutrients, <laughs> you can always go for the filet mignon drizzled with balsamic reduction. But hey. All right. You know. Hey, look. You, look. You you clearly know, and I'm single, so maybe, maybe there's something there that I'm missing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I met perhaps. 888-742-3345. Nadia G. Call up right now. She will fucking help you through it like if you're like me and clueless about cooking she is she is the shit uh 888-742-3345 come on back let's go we got nadia g up in this bitch what up whoop, whoop. you like that shit yeah he's getting all hard listening to them yelling to the <laughs> we run this rap shit <laughs> what kind of music you like to cook to Ah oh, man, all kinds of all kinds of different music. These days, I've been listening to a lot of Poolside FM. So this is, this is just you, you just type that into your browser, Poolside FM. Yeah, and uh, it's got like all this this kind of weird eighties Poolside, obviously like style kind of music, chill, fun time, summertime, cooling out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and like what's really cool about Poolside FM is that on your screen is gonna be playing like really cheesy clips from movies from the eighties and aerobics videos and it's just it's really strange. Did you notice that in the eighties they had very long booties? Like they would do that shit, them aerobics girls with their booties would look like rectangles. They'd be these <laughs> long ass booties. It's because the cut yeah. of of the uh, of the panty was was super high, so they'd have that almost all the way up to their waist, like like jacked in there. It's kind of like a like a wedgie, if you yeah. will, an atomic wedgie panty. I never liked that. Even even in the eighties, I was like, this is some bullshit. I you know I mean I like a high waisted panty. I think there's a happy medium because these days everything cuts so low, like boy yeah. short style. Yeah. That's not super sexy either. I think you know between the two would be. The Where's most your ideal appealing. panty spot? Where do you, where you want it to hit? Like, yeah, so you, you kind of want it to hit. I don't know, maybe like two inches up above the hip bones. I guess so. Yeah. You get any higher, it looks like period underwear. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? It looks like your it looks like your period draws. Especially if it got like crazy period stains on it. Do you have a special? Do you do do you, do you have <laughs> do you do the period underwear? What bitch does not have period underwear? You're not a woman unless you have period underwear. That's how it goes. That's that's yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's that's the facts. Do you, are they like? A shittier (laughs) brand? Is it like the ones your grandmother got you that are really fucking ugly and you're like, ah, fuck it, I'll just use them for my period? No, I would suggest, you know, much like gym socks, you'd want to go with black. You go black. Yeah. Once you go black, you never go back. (laughs) That's what that's the saying. I don't know how that references period underwear, but uh, yeah, sure. (laughs) Why not? I don't know. I I never really get a chance to say that, especially as a white guy. So I just wanted to really drop that on you. (laughs) It makes sense. When you see the opportunity, go for it. All right, we got Nadia G here. She's talking about period underwear and cooking. Call up right now, 888-742-3345. Let's go to Mallory in Texas. Uh, Mallory, what's up? Mallory. Yeah. Hey. Hey. What's up? Hey. Hey. You, How y'all doing? You, you're on, good. You're on the you're on the radio, so Woo-hoo. just fucking talk. Awesome. Well, I was calling about I was wondering about a dark meat chicken recipe because 
dark meat's really greasy and that's gross. <laughs> Well, so, you know, I know a lot of people, a lot of recipe. people have, a lot of people like have a problem with dark meat, which I don't understand. I think it tastes better than Dude, me some too. dry ass. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I agree with both of you. I think dark meat has so much more flavor than like the chicken breast, for example, which is, can be really, really dry. Um, in regards to recipes for chicken, I mean, there's so many different ways you could do it up, but it's getting flavor in the meat that's the most important thing because even the dark meat of chicken can be a little bit bland. Sure, it's juicier, but the flavors there are eh, whatever. So what do you do? So what you do is you marinate it in Greek yogurt. So you get that, some Greek yogurt. That real thick yogurt? That thick yogurt. You add some minced garlic in there. You could throw in cilantro, parsley, whatever herbs you like. And then you, you make sure the chicken is completely covered in this yogurt. Well, use a Ziploc bag or something. Pop it in the fridge for 24 hours. And what does it do? So yogurt has enzymes in it that start eating away at the flesh of the meat. So um, that tenderizes exactly. it. Exactly. So it breaks down the muscle fibers, and you're going to have a meat that's much much tenderer. Is that even a word? You're More not tender? from this country. It's okay. <laughs> she doesn't know English it's that gonna, well. It's going to be tender, but then because you added the garlic and all those herbs, it's going to add a ton of flavor. All right, let me... So what do you... See, now this is where... That, I'm with you. I'm right there with you, but then... I'm confused. Do I rinse it off under the faucet? Like, what do you do? Like, <laughs> He's obsessed with rinsing his meat. This is hilarious. Because chicken is gooey to me. Like, that shit be looking mad slimy. Like, Yeah, yeah. Chicken is, is particularly slimy. So I usually rinse off my raw chicken. Okay. So when, when you get the chicken out the package, you, you rinse, rinse it off and you pat it dry. Okay. Yes. All right. Get rid of that slimy feeling. Yeah, because it makes you want, oh, oh, it makes yeah. you want to earl. Yeah, it, 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 it can be very gross. But then once you do it in the yogurt, and okay. Then you just like kind of just smooth off the yogurt. Like you don't want big clumps of it when you're cooking your chicken, but you still want some of the yogurt on it. So you don't rinse it off. You just kind of like wipe off the excess, if All you right. will. And then you just cook it in the oven. Mm-hmm. Cook it in the oven. That you could put it in a dredge and then you know add fry your, that motherfucker. Exactly. Araka. You could put it on the barbecue, wh- whichever way you want to cook that chicken. And then for sauces, I mean, there's so many quick sauces you could make to dress up a chicken. So one of my favorites is uh, the balsamic. The one that you just... Exactly. You could use that one. You could make a quick sauce with lemon, capers, some sun-dried tomato. That's it, man. You just put all that stuff in a in in a pot and the salt and pepper to taste. You, if it's too tangy, add just a little bit of sugar to it to balance out the acidity. But that it's, sounds it's, bomb. Yeah, that's... It's good stuff. I got one for you. Here's a stumper. Lori in Toronto. Hey. What's going What's on? What's up, Lori? Hey. My question is, I'm on a strict meal plan, so macros and calories are really important to, to me when I ask you this question. How do I make quinoa taste good? Uh-huh. <laughs> the One of the world's greatest mysteries. Um Quinoa, how I like to use it, is uh, as a replacement for noodles in soup. Uh, So, you know, if you're making yourself a nice lentil soup or a chicken soup, you throw in the quinoa and it'll give you that carby texture but still a lot of protein. Another great way to use quinoa is to make salads. So you cook up your quinoa and then you refrigerate it and then create dressings, you know, nice light dressings. Like some ranch dressing? <laughs> Not like some, some ranch dressing. With some blue dressing. cheese <laughs> exactly. and bacon. No, it's got to be it's got to be vinaigrettes, okay. you know, to keep that that calorie and fat count down. You hear that, Lori? Like, for me, it's hard for me to, like, I mean, I've drenched it in, like, sriracha sauce because for me it's, like, a little, like, a quarter cup of quinoa, lots of veggies, and, you know, like, my one piece of protein. So quinoa, mm-hmm. for me, like, it has, it's almost, like, I, I can mix it with my stir-fried veggies just to, like, just so I can get it into me. But it's not, come on, man, you acting like it's not that bad, dude. Just some salt and pepper and eat that shit. No, it's not. You can't just do that. Like the the like it, they're granularly and like you find them in your teeth like an I hour later. I don't think she's eating. I don't think it sounds like you're not cooking it right. 
Yeah, maybe maybe cook it for a little a little longer, cause cause generally when I cook quinoa, I mean it has the texture of like couscous. Kinda. I know she's acting. You sound like a four year old. Like you can't you can't get down a spoonful of fucking quinoa. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, easy. I, you know, it's not it's not the tastiest. Look, green out there. Look, you got to get people to look, watch your TV show. I get it. You being nice to her. But come <laughs> on, man. That's a fucking grown-ass woman. You can't eat quinoa, man. Boss up. You want to be a fat ass your whole fucking life? Eat the goddamn quinoa. <laughs> You're welcome. You're fucking welcome. Alex in Virginia. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, what's going on? Uh, uh, my question is, what's the sexiest meal that you can you cook for a woman? Hmm, the sexiest meal. Well, I'll give you the sexiest dessert, uh, bacon chocolate. W- women are so happy when you give them sweet and salty together, and you can make these chocolate treats. You can get so many points. Breakfast can you dick. imagine? Yeah, well, of course. <laughs> There's also a Rude Jude's special sticky dick breakfast, um, but we discussed that earlier. So for dessert... Uh, yeah, man, and it's so easy to make this stuff. You just melt your favorite chocolate in the microwave straight up. But get your milk chocolate chips, put them in the microwave for two minutes until it's melted. Then you grab some of your favorite bacon, raw bacon, you slice it up, you know, real thin, and you fry it until it's super duper crispy. Okay, you don't want it to be soggy. So super crisp, and then you remove all the grease on a paper towel. So zero grease, and then boom, shove that crispy bacon in the melted chocolate. Stir it up and put it in molds. If you don't have molds, who cares? You grab some aluminum foil and you just spread it on the foil, wrap it up carefully, pop it in the fridge. And then you cut it up in chunks. And, and, and even though it looks messy, us cooks like to call that rustic. So you get away with it looking like shit. But man, does it ever <laughs> taste good. Wow. You and go. when your girlfriend's PMSing. <laughs> Give him some bacon chocolate. Yep. Unless she's a Muslim. Happy Ramadan to all the Muslims out there as well. All right, yo, let's play a song. Come back. We can take a couple more of these these uh these phone calls and wrap it up. Nadia G, you're awesome. Let's go.